Hey guys and welcome back to Tutorial Tuesdays and today we're going to be looking at smart objects. Now this also follows on from the resource pack that we did yesterday so it'll help some of you guys who don't know what to do with some of the stuff that you've got. Um, to kick it off we need to know what exactly smart objects can do. Uh, so here we've got two samples of the exact same image, they're the exact same size, same shape, everything identical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of them a smart object by right clicking going to convert smart object and then one of them is going to stay as a raster image just there. There we go, so one's a smart object, one's a raster image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scale these down. There we go. Hit enter to apply the transformation. So we now know that they're that size. Now, as we all know, if we make a raster image larger than it's supposed to be, it's going to get pixelated and blurry. So if we transform these back up, they're about the size they were. There we go. The raster image has become blurry because we applied that transformation. We made it smaller, then we made it bigger again, and we can't do that. It's lost its quality. It's it, it, it remembered to be small, and now it, it can't remember what it's supposed to be like when it's this big. However, the smart object, it's remained, it's, it's kept its quality, it's kept its clarity. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. When we created a smart object, what it actually did is it created like a sub-document, a document within inside this one. So what we can actually do is there's the, th the thumbnail changed um, to indicate that it's a smart object. And what you can do is you can double click on that and it'll enter into the document. So this is the sub-document that it is. And what we can actually do is we can change it. For example, I'm just going to do Control i to invert the colours. And now I can do Control s to save it. And then we can exit out of this. And there we go. They're two different, they're two very different ones. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to go into some more details on what you can do with smart objects in this tutorial. Right now, so I'm going to show you what you can do with multiple objects and some ways that you can manipulate uh, smart objects to your advantage. So here I've got two layers and you can actually create a smart object of multiple layers. So if we select both of them and go right click, convert smart object, uh, it will combine them together um, and we can go into that um, smart object and again these two objects will be here just as they were. As you'll notice, um, the document itself is the size of the objects that you converted. So it isn't the same size as the previous one. Another thing to note is that if you turn on guides, let's do control semicolon, the guides in this document also transfer over to the guides in this one. So the exact same, so you can see proportions and so on. Now what we're going to do is something that you'll notice in some of my personal designs is that I like to play around with the perspective. So if we go to, while, while we've got the smart, job, smart object selected, we're going to go to edit, transform, perspective, and then you can like, change the perspective of things. There we go. Well, I quite like playing around with stuff like this. Now that looks pretty nice, but wait, no, I misspelled a word or I want to change the wording. Now usually you wouldn't be able to do this very easily. So what we can do is we can go into the smart object and it remains as it used to be. So it's just transferring, it says just transforming, sorry, the smart object. So here we can just go in and change the text and go to, um, there we go. Hit control S to save go into here and as you can see it's updated it which is great. So now we're going to look at a few of the mockups that were released in the resource pack yesterday. Now we've got two logos here which I'm going to show you how to do and uh, you need to search for the smart object. So it's usually labelled in the text layer. As you can say your logo is here, double click uh, on layer icon. So you should double click on the layer icon and there we go we're presented with our, our logo. So we can just drag in the one that we want, hit enter, we need to hide the previous one. Control S to save it. There we go. And then, as you can see, it's updated, and that's great. So we can now save this document and uh, use it as we like. Now, in this one, it uses color. So you've got to be, you've got to note that the color that you have in your actual logo, as you can see here, is the color that you're going to be using. So I'm going to try dragging in the. I need to need the dark one. There we go. Hide the previous one. Control S. And then there we go. It's used our color. Now this particular logo doesn't work as well with this design, uh, but it certainly demonstrates the fact that you can use color in it. So now we're going to look at some of the mock-ups for the Apple soft, like the Apple products. Uh, so we've got the MacBook here, and I've opened the PSD, and it comes as a little bit odd. So it's just two plain colours, and it looks a little bit weird. You're not used to this. Um, so we've also been provided in the same file with an image. So we're just going to open up our layers, and we need to drag this image into the document. It's the exact right size. So hit enter, and then you make sure that that is right near the bottom that you place me inside PSD here. So there we go. Just make it full size. Now we need to align up the image that we just did into the so the edges that match the uh, document. So now you can see it's now lined up so that the screen is where we've got our white space. Now we can change this white space by going into the smart object. So the smart object is here, the project holder. There we go. 
I'm just going to double click on that because it's got the smart object sign, cute layers. And there we go. So I'm just going to drag in uh, an old website design, one of my previous websites. So let's choose this one. There we go. Now it looks a little bit odd now, so I can't just hit Control S and it looks a bit weird like that. So I've got to, got to resize it to my liking. Control S to save it. We can go into our first one and it looks like it's on my website, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I hope this has helped you guys. We're just going to go into a couple more things with smart objects and then wrap up this tutorial. Now, sometimes when you drag a design into your document, it will automatically be a smart object. Now, this typically happens with photos, but it can happen with other designs as well. Uh, so just drag it in, hit enter to apply transformation, and as you can see, it's, it remains its quality. Now, the reason this is, if I just delete this and redrag it in, if I dragged it in, made it really small, I hit enter, luckily it's a smart object, so it's remained it's kept its original size, the, uh, the original size it's supposed to be, so I can then scale it back up again. There we go, how it's supposed to be. Now, what I wanted to show you guys is that you could have multiple smart objects and they can all link back to the same file. So if I just, as this is a smart object, if I just scale this down here, I'm gonna create a couple of duplicates. So I'm just gonna keep dragging them around. Now, one of them I'm gonna make small, uh, one of them I'm going to apply transformation to. Transformation is warp it so we can make it look really weird and different. There we go. And then another one we're going to do perspective. It's really extreme. There we go. And I'm going to scale that one down. And one more we're just going to keep the same. So guys, we've got they're all different ones here. Now what we can actually do is we can go into any one of them and I'm just going to apply a very artistic squiggle as they call it. <laughs> just get a different colour so you can easily notice it. Right now this is really messy, but it was just to demonstrate a point. Can control oops S. Now um that is one thing when you drag smart objects in as opposed to um, creating them in the document is that you have to combine all the objects into one. Now if I try to save it now, it's trying to save it as a different document because it thinks it's only supposed to have one layer. So if you do control E, control S, and there we go, it's updated the smart object. If we go in now, it's updated all of them um, as they were. Now, the reason why this was that we could only have one layer is because we didn't create it in the document. So if we if we if we went back to and just undo the changes that we oh. did. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to rasterize it. Now we've got to remember now we've got to keep it, it rasterized while it's the largest size, uh, so that we don't lose quality. So if I rasterize it while it's smaller and made it bigger, of course it's going to lose quality. So we've rasterized it, and we're going to duplicate it. So there's two layers. You can, like select the both. And this is basically, when we create smart objects, it's going to know that this is a smart object with multiple layers in. So we're just going to go convert to smart object, and then we can go in, and if we want to, we can just delete that now. But it means that when we create new layers and like squiggles and stuff like that, um, we can then save it, and it'll update, which is awesome. And we can go back in, and then extra layers will be there, so we can just hide the ones that we want. Now, finally, I'm going to show you how you can make the most of layer styles with smart objects. So, uh, layer styles restrict you to how much you can use a certain effect. So, if we go in now, um, and we're going to add a border. So, if you just go to our blending options, go to stroke, and for the purpose of stroke, I'm just going to make it red. There we go. Now, what we can't do is I want to add another stroke. I want to add like a, a green stroke around the red one, but we can't really do that very easily. Now, no, you could go into your glow options and be clever with that. But I want to add a stroke, so. Control S, we're going to back to our previous one where we've got a smart object and we can actually do the same on our smart object. Now the smart object doesn't recognize it as being a stroke, it recognizes it as being the actual object. So we're going to add another stroke onto it and we're going to make it green. There we go. So now this was just one example with stroke layer, but hopefully this will help you guys create some amazing designs and be sure to tweet them into us and share them with us. Uh, so I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Leave a like if it was. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.